These pot holders are fantastic for using up leftover yarn. They also make great holiday and housewarming gifts. This is part of the nine quick and easy knitted gift series. The whole series is linked in the description. Enjoy! I've got some chunky yarn and a pair of six millimeter double pointed needles or even a pair of circular needles would work. I'll show you how to use both of these needles. You'll also need a tapestry needle, a sewing needle and matching thread. Now when you're choosing a yarn, you want to choose a yarn that is uh, made of natural materials. So wool, cotton, you don't want to use yarn that has a lot of synthetic content. So like acrylic or polyester. The reason is that when you have your finished pot holder, you don't want to put a really hot pot on acrylic yarn because you might end up melting the pot holder and that will create a whole set of new problems. We want the yarn to be predominantly a natural fiber so that it won't melt and stick to the pot. We're going to cast on three stitches. So I'll make my loop and I'm going to cast on three stitches. I'm going to push the stitches from this point to the other side of the needle. And now you can see that the yarn, the working yarn is now at the far end of my knitting. So before it was up front here and the working yarn was like ready to go. And now we're going to push it over to this point and now the working yarn is coming out from the back of the knitting and that's where we want it. So I'm going to take out my bare needle and now I'm just going to knit into these stitches. So again, the yarn is coming from this last stitch here and I'm going to push my needle through and just knit that first stitch. And then I'm going to knit the second stitch and whoops, let's do that again. Knit the second stitch. There we go and then knit the third stitch. And now we're going to push the stitches to the other end of the needle so that the yarn is once again coming out from this far left side, right? It's not up here, it's at the back. So that is what we want. And do that again. We'll just knit these three stitches. And now our yarn is coming out from the last stitch and we'll just push our stitches to the other end of the needle so that the working yarn is coming out from that last stitch and then we're going to continue knitting. All right, so that's pretty much all there is to making an I cord. So we want to knit this I cord until it is 68 inches in length, depending on what size you want your pot holder to be, how uh, thick your yarn is, this length may be different. But for my purposes and for my super chunky yarn, I'm going to knit 68 inches. After just knitting a couple of rows, you can see that the I cord is forming. It looks like really thick, uniform rope. Now I'm going to show you how to knit an I cord with circular needles. The same concept applies. You'll want to make sure that the working yarn is coming out from the last stitch and then you will just knit knit those three stitches and then when you come to the end of the row you want your working yarn to be at the back so we will slide your knitting to the other end of the needle so now the working yarn is on the last stitch and we can knit and just slide your knitting after every row and you'll notice that we're not turning our needle over it always stays on this same side so continue doing this until your I cord is 68 inches or the length that you like. Once your I cord gets really long, you can actually just spiral it, just kind of casually spiral it like this so that you can get a sense of how big your final pot holder is going to be. So when your I cord is roughly two inches less than how long you want it to be, then we can decrease it. So all that this means is we are going to knit these two stitches together and combine them. So I'm going to stick my right needle into these two stitches and then knit them together as if they were one stitch. There we go. So now I've just decreased those two stitches into one stitch and the last stitch I'm just going to knit. Great. So now we have two stitches on our needle and our I cord will decrease a little bit in width. It'll be a little bit slimmer and that'll look really nice when we are kind of ending our pot holder. Okay. So now that we've got two stitches, just continue knitting like an inch or so. So there's nothing different. We're just going to continue to knit, push our knitting to the other side of the needle 
and just continue knitting our I cord, except that now we've got two stitches instead of three. So now I've knit about two inches in this two stitch I cord. So now we are going to take our scissors out and just cut, you know, a couple inches in length of yarn, snip that off. And now we're going to put this strand of yarn through these two stitches. So what I typically do is I'll take that strand of yarn, wrap it over the needle, and then just grab the stitch and bring it over that strand of yarn, bring it over the strand of yarn, and then pull the yarn through and tighten it up. And now our eye cord is secure. I want to get rid of this strand of yarn. So I'm gonna take out my tapestry needle and just kind of like stab it into the eye cord, into the center of it. So now it's through the eye cord. So I'm gonna thread up this strand of yarn and now we're just gonna pull it through the eye cord. Snip it right off. And now our eye cord looks nice and neat. So we can do this on the other side as well. So now we're gonna get out some needle and thread. So for you, I would recommend just getting some thread that matches the color of the yarn because you want the thread to be camouflaged in the yarn, you don't want it to show. But for our demonstration purposes, I'm gonna use a really dark thread so that you can see what I am doing. So we're just using a regular sewing needle and just regular cotton thread. So I'm just gonna cut off a bit of thread here and thread up my sewing needle. I'm doubling it up and then just tying a knot at the end right here. Okay, and I'm just gonna cut off the remainder of thread at the knot. Just want it to look really neat. So we're not going to start at this end, which is where our I cord tapered off. We're going to start at the big end. So this is where we originally cast on and I'm going to start coiling the I cord. So when you look at the I cord, you can see there's like a line of V shapes, right? Of like knit stitches. So basically the trick of sewing this together is that we want the um, line of stitches to be facing the same direction, to be facing up, right? So when I'm coiling it, I can see that this is the line of stitches. So I just want to uncoil it so that that line of stitches always stays up, right? So it's not like coiling around like this, right? And then like coiling again, we just want it to be, um, for that line of stitches to be facing upwards, right? So you just have to keep an eye on that as you are seaming this I cord together. So I'm just going to insert my sewing needle into the side of the I cord and then through to the other side like this. I'm just gonna pull it through, push in my needle again, just, I don't know, a centimeter down and I'm gonna push in through to the other side and just grab that. And I'm gonna insert my needle in between the two threads so that I can kind of lock it in place. So here we go, just pull it through our knot has sort of secured on the side of the I cord. And now I'm just going to push in my needle about a centimeter over to the right, come out on the other side of the I cord like this, and then pull through. And now I'm gonna just continue coiling it. Okay, so again, we want this braided v shape edge to be facing up. So I'm just very intentionally coiling it up and I'll go in about one centimeter here, go through the entire I cord out to the other side and pull it through. Okay. And now I'll kind of turn the I cord and go through one centimeter this way. It doesn't have to be a centimeter. It could be like two centimeters. Just depends on how secure you want um, the pot holder to be. But by the end of this, this, you know, it'll be very secure if you're just stitching through many, many times. So again, I'm just gonna go maybe through this side here. Uh, let's go through here and through the this side. 
And how many stitches you do like through the coil is sort of up to you, right? If you feel like it's secure and you're happy with it, then, you know, you can keep coiling. If you feel like, eh, it's, you know, feels like there's a lot of loose areas, then you can just do a couple more stitches. So right here, I can see that, you know, this side is not secure at all. So I will just go through this side and try to, you know, give it a little bit more security by going through that side. You're sort of going by feel, you know, more than anything. Now you'll notice that my needle is actually getting a little bit too small. It can't reach the other side. So I can actually just insert my needle through to like the center of the coil and then pull it through. Here we go. And then from the center, I can decide where I want to pivot to. Do I want to go through this side or back around here or up front? Um, I kind of use the center as like my sort of my HQ once the needle is too short to go through the whole pot holder. So once your thread is getting a little bit too short like this, I will stick it into the center and tie a knot. Here we go, here's a little loopy and I'll just put my needle through the loop, make a knot right in the center, snip it right off, get my thread out and we will thread up our needle and start the process all over again. This is not a super quick process, but it's very satisfying and it's actually quite meditative. So go ahead and coil up your pot holder, sewing it in place as you go. So at some point you'll notice that your pot holder is getting so thick that it's hard to even get your needle into the center of your pot holder. And when that happens, that's all right. Instead of pushing our needle through to the center, we can push our needle through to like right here, for instance. I'll just poke my needle through here and maybe I'll poke in through. And then from here, I'll just poke out through to the outside like this. This is the part where our I-cord kind of tapered off into the two stitch I-cord. We did that so that the ending of the I-cord can kind of blend nicely into the edge right here. If it was really big and thick, I think it looks sort of like there's a step. So having a smaller I-core just makes it blend in really nicely. Now I'm right at the edge of the top of this I-cord. I think it could be a little bit more like hidden behind. So I'm gonna just do a couple more stitches, stitch into the edge and just kind of pull it down into the back here. So do a couple more stitches. So I think that looks pretty good. So now I'm going to go all the way back to the middle and that's where I will end my stitching. Oh, there we go. Hurrah! And now we have finished up our pot holder and this is the right side and it looks so cute. Oh my gosh, I love it so much. Now, um, you can see that with my finished pot holder here, I kind of put like a little tab on the end and that's just to kind of cap off this portion right here where our i cord ends i think it just adds like a nice finishing touch you don't have to do this if you don't want to but i'll show you how to do it should you desire to do this for yourself now you can use a little bit of fabric some ribbon i have leather that i picked up from the craft store i'm just going to cut out about like an inch yeah, something like that. I've got my little tab and I can't like slip it through here because we have actually sewed this securely. So I'm gonna take my scissors and sacrilege. I'm gonna just cut through some of this stitching. Now there's a little hole here, right? I've cut loose the thread and I'm gonna slip my little leather tab in and then wrap it around, get that placement right. So I'm gonna turn it over hold these two ends together. I'm gonna to take out my needle and thread. So I'm just going around this tab and the stitching is a little bit crude, but I feel like it kind of works with the style of the pot holder, which is also kind of rustic. Secure the stitching and place. And there we are, our pot holder is complete. I think it looks really nice when you gift pot holders in sets of two. So this is another one that I've knit. I've used a matching tab here and it looks so adorable. So that is how you make an I-cord pot holder.